Welcome back. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Tonight in a special report, we take a look at the history of Filipino American journey here on the Central Coast, specifically with farm workers whose story sometimes gets forgotten. They were instrumental when it comes to the fight for farm worker rights. Kiowans Anna Torreya sat down with the man from Salinas who was at the forefront of some of the biggest labor movements. When we think about farm worker activism, we often think of Cesar Chavez or Dolores Huerta, but forgotten in the history are the Filipino farm workers who helped start some of the biggest movements, labor leaders like Larry Itliong and Philip Veracruz. The forgottenness of like Filipino farm labor workers kind of comes from like the workspace and also like the mentality of what that generation was coming in. They wanted like a better life for like the next gen. Born in Salinas, Alex Fabros says his grandfather sent him to work in the fields after dropping out of college. One of the fields he worked at our field crew ended up at the Radanovich Ranch, which is south of Delano. Uh, it was hard work. We'd get up around maybe 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, try to get out there early enough to get maybe 8 to 10 hours work done before the sun got really hot. Temperatures at that time reaching into the triple digits. Fabros recalls spending hours in the sun cutting grapes. On September 8, 1965, the Delano grape strike begun. Well, we Filipinos went on strike first. Fabros says work Workers were striking for higher wages. He also remembers strikes happening in Gonzales to the Coachella Valley. He recalls when Larry Itliong reached out to Cesar Chavez. And that's when Itliong went and talked to Chavez. And at the uh, Church of Our Lady of Guadalupe, they, they voted to support us. And again, both groups, the Filipino group, uh, Agriculture Workers Organizing Committee, AWOC, and the uh, Mexican group, they wanted to strike for higher wages, but this time they were really serious about creating a union. Larry Itliong and Philip Veracruz were labor leaders and key to the founding of the United Farm Workers Movement. They helped organize farm workers who worked in fields like this one. The, uh, the fight for better health for, for our communities. That came from the attempt to give the models down in Delano medical care, health care. And then it also spread from Delano to Salinas. Jason Agpawa with the Asian Cultural Experience in Salinas says one of the reasons this part of history gets forgotten is because it can carry hard and traumatic memories for the Delano Manongs. In my opinion, I think um, learning from our traumas is the kind of best way to kind of move forward, um, knowing what happened in the past in order to kind of like make positive change. Earlier this month, the Monterey County Board of Supervisors recognized the contributions of not only Asian Americans, but also Filipino Americans on the Central Coast. Supervisors also apologized to the Filipino community for past actions taken against them. The laws that were enacted to make the lives and civil liberties of Filipinos um, um, that violated those rights. It's part of a history that needs to be talked about, says Alex Fabros. That's an important history for America to understand that the Salinas Valley is sometimes known as the salad bowl of the nation. And for the longest time, from the 1930s up until the 1960s, it was Filipinos who were working in the fields. And now we're kind of coming into a world we can actually start rocking that boat. I mean, I feel like this is that time to kind of like understand what happened in the past in order to kind of make those changes as well too. What I encourage them to do is write about their own history from their own generation or the history of their parents. In Monterey County, Anna Torreya, KION News Channel 46. That was only part one of Anna's special report. As for part two, we're going to take a look at how the Tabera Project and UC Santa Cruz are documenting and preserving stories of Filipino families in the Pajaro Valley and how expanding ethnic studies into public schools will help keep history alive.